Jim Branscom here for the Cinemac Boy Vlog. Today I'm out and about looking for some filming locations to one of my favorite 80s monster movies, Neon Maniacs. Neon Maniacs. If you've never seen Neon Maniacs, it's about a bunch of cool looking creatures that live underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. They all have, you know, individual skills and looks. You know, you have one with an axe, one with a bow and arrow, there's a samurai one. And basically they just go out and kill people for fun. But they do have one weakness getting wet, which kind of makes living under a bridge near a body of water a little bit ridiculous, but hey, it's the 80s and that's what they do. So while there's lots of establishing shots of San Francisco in this movie, the majority of it was shot right here in Los Angeles. So right here is, we're right below the Golden Gate Bridge. Actually, no we're not. Through the powers of movie magic, the Golden Gate Bridge, or underneath it where the Neon Maniacs live, is actually at the Lake Hollywood Reservoir. This is the pathway Paula would have took to get down to the ground level to be underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, obviously using air quotes because it wasn't nowhere near the Golden Gate Bridge. Unfortunately, you can't go down this way anymore because they have it fenced off, but I guess at some point you could just easily go down and walk around and take a stroll around the Mulholland Dam. So right around this stretch here is where Paul is walking around looking for the lair of the Neon Maniacs. So you can tell that it was shot here mostly from, if you could see, there's some kind of stone bears that are on these columns there. Though I'm not 100% sure, I think this is probably the doorway that the Neon Maniacs came out of from their lair underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. Now this isn't exact, but somewhere around here, where Paul's friends are riding their bikes to go meet her for her movie shoot. This is Hollywood Forever Cemetery. They ride their bikes around and kind of cut across the grass there. I think Hollywood Forever has been reconfigured a few times over the years, so I don't know if it's just, I'm not gonna be able to find the exact spot. But the one thing you can see, 100% sure, if you pause the movie and just look, or you take a screen grab and zoom in, is you can see the Paramount Tower in the background of the shot is right here. So right on this corner here on Melrose Avenue is where we're introduced to the character Steven who's going for a little night jog with his doggy. This used to be a place called Aardvark Vintage or Aardvark Clothing or something like that which you can see in the film. Now it's known as American Print Vintage but at least they kind of kept the building and the display as it was. This building right here is obviously new and hasn't been there that long, but what I'm more interested in in regards to Neon Maniacs is what was once here. This used to be a location of kind of a bar club restaurant called the Grandia Room. You can see it briefly in the movie. The Natalie and her friends drive by in the van and one of the guy driving calls the punk kids outside punk assholes. <laughs> But Grandia Room is kind of, I guess, significant to LA music because that's where the Red Hot Chili Peppers played their first show. If, you, if you're in that band, that has significance. If you're not, you probably don't give a shit. But for me, this is just a little bit, just a quick shot in Neon Maniacs. So now your friends pull up the, get some, some party drinks here at Bogey's Liquor right off of Melrose Avenue. Uh, you can see where the sign used to be, but they just kind of pull up right in front of the store there and kind of run in. Here you are. Fork over five bucks. Five bucks? We're talking beer, not champagne. So right next to Bogey's Liquors, this is Yum Yum Donuts, but in the 80s, this used to be a Winchell's Donuts. So at least it's still a donut shop. But from this angle, you can see in the movie, you can see Steve running with his dog up the street. And this is where he runs into Natalie, who her and her friends are buying some booze to celebrate her birthday. So after Natalie and her friends grab their booze, they leave Steve and dog behind at this intersection at Melrose and Rossmore. So right here, we're in a picnic area in Griffith Park where I believe 
they shot the, the van park scene where after Natalie and her friends go to Bogey's Liquor, they come here to celebrate her birthday. And by celebrate, it's playing football, uh, going off the woods and, you know, fooling around, sending off fireworks. And poor Natalie's just sitting in the van kind of being sad. So that's a great way to celebrate the birthday. Now, I'm not going to say this is 100% the area because I think a lot has changed, but this is as close as I could find that looks like in the background of the van shot. So this is another shot from that picnic area in Griffith Park. This is from the van's point of view as the Neon Maniacs are approaching Natalie. I'm, again, gonna say I'm not 100% sure, but you'll see that really, really slanted tree. I believe the Samurai Neon Maniac is walking kind of in front of it. Again, not 100%, but it does look damn close. Right now I'm at the world famous Hollywood High School. Now, a lot of celebrities went to high school here, but it's also been used in a ton of movies, including Neon Maniacs. I believe they also use the interiors, which unfortunately, not gonna be able to get in there and look at those, but yeah, this is where they shot all the high school stuff, as well as the costume dance. Let me ruin your evening. Unfortunately, a lot of things have changed since this movie was made, but I'll show you some identifiers that when you watch the movie, while the building itself that no longer looks exactly how it did in 1985, 1986, you can still identify it in the movie. Although right here is not the same entryway they used in the movie. The only reason I'm showing is because if you see the columns that kind of line the windows and the doors, you can see that exact kind of work in the entryway of the high school when people were entering for the dance. Obviously this building has been renovated and changed over multiple times over the years, but this is about as good as any identifier that to the scenes of the movie. So after getting off the bar train, Natalie's steaming around this corner to go catch a bus to get away from the Niamiacs that are still in pursuit. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you in the void.